We are here in Phoenix, Arizona, in this beautiful part of the Western United States. But the story I'm about to tell you is shocking and horrible. It's the story of a lovely four-year-old boy who was taken out to the desert by two creeps who shot him to death. That happened just before Christmas 1989. But this is also the story of the mother, Deborah Milky, who was wrongfully accused, convicted, and condemned to death for this crime. I'm going to tell you why I am so convinced Deborah Milky is innocent. She was railroaded by a bad cop. As a journalist, I investigated her case, visited her on Arizona's death row. The only evidence that implicated her at her trial was Phoenix Police Detective Armando Saldate claiming she confessed. But what we know for sure is two men took her little boy out in the desert and murdered him. One of them, Jim Styers, himself a father of a small daughter, rented a room of his apartment to Deborah and her son. The other killer, Roger Scott, was a lifelong friend of Styers, and we know Styers wanted to have a romantic relationship with Deborah. Now, Deborah Milky was a financially challenged single mother. In November 1989, she found a much better job across town so she could afford her own two-bedroom apartment and put Christopher in kindergarten. Once Steyer learned that, he was angry and he told her he didn't want her to leave. But he never succeeded in his quest for a relationship. However, the Phoenix media somehow reported that these two people were lovers. And the public believed it, and uh, somehow they still believe it today. Now, when an execution date was set in January 1998, it was especially frightening for Deborah, and she will remember it forever as a nightmare. The moment that it really hit me when I thought, wow, this is for real, is when this doctor came. And I didn't know why he was there. And then um, he put one of those uh, tourniquet things around my arm and said that he had to check my veins. And when I saw him do that, I just broke down because then I realized, oh my gosh, this state really wants to do this to me. This odyssey began for me when I visited my local library in Switzerland and I found this book. It was written by Renate Janka. It's a horrifying story about the murder of her four-year-old grandson and now her daughter Debra Milky was convicted and is currently on death row in Arizona waiting for her execution. And by the way, I have written my own book about this tragedy. This is the Perryville Women's Prison, located west of Phoenix, where Deborah Milky is sitting on a three-woman death row. She is confined to a small cell and is allowed one hour a day outside for exercise. Armando Soldate goes to the Pinell County Sheriff's Department without a recorder to interview a murder suspect. He wanted to set up a swearing contest where in the court a jury would have to decide who's telling the truth, either the policeman or the suspect. And we know how that's going to fall. It's certainly going to favor the policeman. They're not equal in the court. I don't care what anybody says. Next is, he could have put in front of her a piece of paper. He had a pencil and paper, and he could have written out the confession and said, here, sign here. He didn't do it because she wouldn't have signed it. He knew it. She didn't confess. Now, not only that, he could have put a waiver form, which you routinely put in front of someone uh, before they, you have them answer questions, saying, hey, I understand I have these rights. I waive them. I will talk to you anyway. There is no waiver. There's no waiver because he knows she wouldn't have signed it. Next, he takes her to the Central Police Department uh, at, at downtown Phoenix. That's an over an hour drive. Uh, what does she say? What does he record? Nothing.
but he takes her through the back door of the police department and the press is all prearranged and warned so that they can have a perp walk and show these defendants. He brings Deborah Milky in, grabs her by the arm, this big important arrest, and behind her is Styers and Scott. But the rub here is he's in, she's inside the central police headquarters and there's tape recorders everywhere on every floor and they also have video equipment. Does he videotape her? Does he say, let's get this over again? No. Why not? Because he did not want the truth to get out. This case is grinding ever so slowly before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals and from there it's going to be delivered to the hands of the Supreme Court. They're splitting the finest of hairs of what most people would call legal mumbo-jumbo. What seems to be forgotten is the truth, along with the pathetic job done by defense lawyer Ken Ray at Deborah's trial.